Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In today's presentation, we will discuss inverse functions. Before we continue, please visit my channel for more math lessons and tutorials. Thank you! The first thing we need to know is the inverse relations. By switching the input with the output of each ordered pair in the original relation, the result will be the set of ordered pairs for the inverse relation. You can see the function machines below as examples. These functions are inverses because their input and output can be switched. Suppose we use an input of 4 in the first function, the output will be 14. And, if we use this 14 as the input for the second function, the output will be 4. And, we can use this process to check whether f of x is the inverse of g of x. We can try substituting a number for x in f of x, it would be better if it's a whole number. We can use 3 to evaluate f of x, we will get f of 3 equals 2, and the ordered pair here is 3 2. And then, if we use 2 to evaluate g of x, the result will be 3, so the ordered pair is 2 3. You can see that the input and output for the two functions were switched, so our answer is f of x is the inverse of g of x. Let's try another example. We can try negative 1 to evaluate f of x, we will get f of negative 1 equals negative 2, and the ordered pair here is negative 1 negative 2. And then, if we use this negative 2 to evaluate g of x, the result will be negative 1, so the ordered pair is negative 2 negative 1. You can see that the input and output for the two functions were switched, so our answer is f of x is the inverse of g of x. Now, if we will use tables and graphs to illustrate inverses, we can use the following example. On the left side you can see a quadratic function with its ordered pairs written in table form. If we switch the x and y values for this table, and then plot the ordered pairs, we can see the graph on the right side as the result. Please take note, not all inverses are functions. You can see this as we use the vertical line test. So, how do we check if the inverse of the relation would be a function or just a simple relation? If a horizontal line intersects a curve more than once, its inverse is not a function. Use the horizontal line test to decide which graphs have an inverse that is a function. Now, it's time to solve for the inverse of a function. Step number one, switch the x and y variables of the given function. Step number two, solve for the y variable to get the inverse of the function. Okay, we have here example number one. We need to find the inverse of the equation below. So, step number one, we need to switch the places of the x and y variables. And step number two, we solve for y. This will give us the inverse function, f inverse of x, equals x over 6 plus 2. Okay, we now have example number two. We need to find the inverse of the function below. We can use the variable y instead of f of x. So, step number one, we need to switch the places of the x and y variables. And step number two, we solve for y. This will give us the inverse function, f inverse of x, equals the quantity x plus 2, over the quantity x minus 3. Now it's time to graph the inverse of a function. We have here, f of x equals 3x over 2 plus 1. First we need the graph of this linear function. So we plot our first point at the y-intercept, y equals 1. And then, we can use the slope to get the other points for this function, going 3 units upward and going 2 units to the right. We can repeat this as many times as we like. We can do it also towards the other direction to have more points. And then, we can now put our line for this function. After we identified the ordered pairs for this linear function, we can switch the x and y coordinates to plot the ordered pairs for the inverse of the function. You can now see the graphs of the function f of x, and f inverse of x. 
These graphs shows that the f inverse of x is a reflection of f of x, with the line y equals x acting as the mirror line. It also shows that all the points of f of x are of the same distances with the corresponding points of f inverse of x. Let's have another example. Here, we have f of x, equals the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 1. Using the horizontal line test, it shows that the inverse will not be a function. But if we can restrict the domain for the function, the inverse will be a function. To graph the inverse of the given function, we need to identify some ordered pairs from f of x. And then, switch the x and y coordinates of these ordered pairs one by one. We now have the graph of the inverse of the function. We have seen how to graph the inverse of a function with a restricted domain, we will now solve for the inverse of the function. According to the graph of the given function, its range would be y is greater than or equal to 1. And, if we switch the domain and range of the given function, it would give us the domain and range of the inverse function. And then, solving for the inverse function, step number 1 is to switch the places of the x and y variables. After that, we need to solve for y. This will give us, y equals the square root of the quantity x minus 1, minus 1. So the inverse function is, f inverse of x, is equal to the square root of the quantity x minus 1, minus 1. Please remember this, by looking at the given domain, vertex, and the opening of the quadratic function, we can predict the graph of the function. Look at this given function for example. The domain, x is less than or equal to the h-coordinate of the vertex. This means that the domain is restricted to the left side of the vertex only, because the symbol points towards the left. And the squared quantity is positive, so the quadratic function extends upward. If it extends upward, the range should be greater than or equal to the k-coordinate of the vertex. Let's have another example. In this example the domain, x is greater than or equal to the h-coordinate of the vertex. This means that the domain is restricted to the right side of the vertex only, because the symbol points towards the right. And the squared quantity is negative, so the quadratic function extends downward. If it extends downwards, the range should be less than or equal to the k-coordinate of the vertex. Please try this. You may pause this video if you need more time. Here are the answers. The domain is restricted to the left side of the vertex, because the inequality symbol points towards the left. And the range is, y is less than or equal to 3 because the squared quantity is negative and it extends downwards. Now, for our last example, we will graph the function below. Here, our vertex is at 7 negative 3, and the domain is restricted to the left side of the vertex only, so we can now plot the points to sketch the graph of the function. And then, we can switch the x and y coordinates for this function, this will allow us to plot the ordered pairs for the inverse function. After plotting the ordered pairs of the inverse function, we can now graph the f inverse of x. Now that we have the graphs of the function and its inverse, we can indicate the domain and range for both graphs. And then, we can solve for the inverse function. We can start with switching the x and y variables, and then solve for y. Transpose the negative 3 to the left side of the equation. Get the square root of both sides of the equation. Since the range is less than or equal to 7, the square root needs to be negative. And then, transpose the negative 7 to the left side. We now have the inverse function, negative square root of the quantity x plus 3, plus 7. In summary for this video, we discussed solving for the inverse of a function, and graphing the inverse of a function. I hope I was able to help you learn about the inverse of a function. 
Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload my next videos. Please share this video with your friends. Have a nice day.